Like, are we in a club? Oh my gosh. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. It's so good to see everybody. It's 8.30, so we want to start on time. And we want to say thank you so much for joining us for this webinar, especially finding out in the last few days. But we know that, hey, Ariana, we know that we are excited to find out more about applying for this grant. These grants, there's more than one grant that's up for grabs and they happen, the applications deadline is at the end of the month. So what I'm gonna do is my name is Corel Pinder and I am the owner and managing director of Island Dreams Management. And I have a few friends with me who are gonna be with me today. So I'll just let them say hello real quick and then I'll tell you about the agenda for tonight. So Mrs. Tyronda Glinton, you wanna say hello to everybody? Hello, 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 and thanks for joining us tonight. I hope it's going to be informative and exciting. Awesome. And then Kovan, are you doing no no camera tonight again? I am. I am. Good night. I am trying to do it, but it says the host has disabled it. Okay, let me get it sorted out so that you can do it too. They would love to see your face. Okay, so can you do it now? Yeah, the background's a little dark, so I'm still working on the lighting. Okay, so just get a, a light and just focus it on your face. Get a lamp and focus it on your face. All right, so welcome. Hi, Matthew Calmer. Good to see you. All right, so tonight's agenda, this is how tonight's agenda is going to go. I want to tell you how we got here, like what's going on, how we got here. And then I'm going to speak a little bit on branding and marketing. As you saw on the flyer, I'm going to give you a little quick overview on branding and marketing. And then Tyronda is going to give you some information on technology because she's a technology specialist and a lot of the facts that you want to know about how to make your application competitive for these two grants that are up for grabs at by the end of the month. So Tyronda is going to hit that. And then Kovan, who's become my favorite person in the last few days. And every time I speak with a client, they're like, give me his contact. I want that. So Kovan, what he has been able to do for us is we have online payments. And those online payments that are paid by clients go directly to our Bahamian account. That's right, no PayPal, no sending to my personal Bank of America account. Uh, they pay online and it goes directly to me. So he's gonna give you a little more information on how that can happen for you and your company because we know when we have online payment platforms, the money comes to us much more quickly. I had a client, I sent her an email at 250, by 252, the money was sent to my account because she was able to pay online. There was no direct, send a direct deposit to my account, no back and forth. So Kovan is gonna give us some updates on that. I also have a gift for you in terms of how you can get uh, $5 off when you sign up. And so that's also gonna be given at the end. So make sure to stay tuned. If you're excited and ready in the chat for here to hear how this process is gonna go, I just need you to say ready. And then I'm gonna jump into the story of how we got here. Just say ready in the chat. If you are ready, let me know. Yes, ready. Yes, ready to hear. Yes, Cathedra, Kira. Yes, Mikhail. Mikhail, good to see you again. Jillian is here. Yes, Leticia, Danielle. Ah, oh, Larissa, Crystal. Awesome. I see so many of uh, the clients that I get to work out, work with. Shout out to Creative Link Up Crew. They had, we have, a, that's a membership club under Island Dreams Management. Creative Link Up. And I know I see some of them in here tonight. They, we have our transformational Tuesday. We have our live sessions on Tuesday. So they just did a session. They're like, here, Linda, Davina. They're like, we're here. We're here. So they just came out of a session right at eight o'clock and we jumped into this one at 8 30 but they're here for the information they want to apply for this grant and they want to be ready so how we got here so tyronda is a client of mine and we were having our client strategy session the other day and we were talking about some of the people that she wanted to serve and some of the services she wanted to offer and not knowing that earlier that day someone had sent me the application from Mercy Corps to apply for the technology grant. And I have pretty, a lot of technology implemented in my company already. So I already started to think like, I have a lot of, I already have a professional website that was done by a web designer. I have online payments now. I have client relationship management systems. I have a lot of online systems already. And so I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna apply for the grant, you know? And just having that conversation with her about some of the things that she wanted to offer and some of the things that she does in that conversation, she made me realize no, you need to apply for this grant. She made me a believer. And so I said, no, Tyronda, this, this information, you need to not only share this with me 
we need to share it with the community of people that fall under Island Dreams Management and the things we do. And then we're just going to open it up to everybody. We're going to put it out on Facebook and let people know that these grants are out there. Don't feel intimidated because it has the word technology in front of it because Tyrande is a technology specialist. And tonight she's going to tell you some tips and things that you could do to apply. Some of you may hear things where you're like, wow, I knew that, but I didn't really know, know that, or just needing someone in the technology realm to break it down to you say, yes, this is something that you can apply for. I will let you know at the top half, because I am one of those people that doesn't like to go to webinars and hear the word free. And then they're giving me a paid option at the end. And I didn't know there will be a paid option for things that you can do at the end of this. I'm sorry. If you want to go deeper, there's a paid option. It doesn't mean that we would not be giving you quality in this free webinar. You will definitely get quality. You can definitely leave this webinar, apply on your own and figure everything out and wait till you get a grant to pay for certain services that you might hear about tonight. But there are paid, you gotta pay for the Figaro. I don't have a free online payment system. That is a paid fee. If you want to be able to work with Tyronda one-on-one -on -one and have her deep dive into your business alone, that would be a paid opportunity, but she's gonna give you gems tonight. So you could walk away and apply for that application even if you don't wanna work one-on-one, -on -one. but there is an option if you wanna work one-on-one -on -one with her. Um, and there's an option to work with us at Island Dreams Management if you wanna dive deeper. But even if you don't and you just wanted the information tonight, that's what we're gonna give to you. So we're gonna get into the branding and marketing presentation. The reason I want to do branding and marketing first is because I think a lot of people think they understand branding and marketing, but a lot of times they really don't. And I just wanted to give an overview because when you're going to either invest your own money or seeking for money to be invested in your company, there are certain things that you need to be aware of before you start. And so I'm going to pull up my presentation for you on branding and marketing just to give you a quick overview of what it entails. So for those who are meeting me for the first time, and if you have had an affiliation with Island Dreams Management before, you could type in the chat where you have connected with us before. If, if it's your first time, just say first time, Corel. I don't know you from a can of paint. First time, never interacted with you before. If you are in the Livelihood program from Abaco, just say Livelihood, Abaco is here, Lively. You could be SBR, Grand Bahama. Maybe you're all. Maybe you were in my group at all. Or maybe you know Tyrona from all. Um, but just let us know in the chat, you know, how are you? All right, so first, oh, we have a lot of first times, a lot of first times. Welcome, welcome. It's good to have you here. So, so it should be noted, if it is your first time, I do want to tell you that you are now added to my email list. Now that you've attended this event, you're now on my email list. So expect emails from me. So if you do not want to receive emails from us in the future, you can just say, this sharing screen is doing something to me. You can just send me an email and say, don't send me any emails. I don't want to know about any more free workshops. I don't want to know about anything else that you're doing. So you can just send that to me. Okay. So, all right. I think we have it up and running now. All right. So we good to go. Let me know. Can you see the screen? Can everybody see the screen? First time, yes. Okay, great. We can see the screen. We're ready to go. Okay, so we're doing branding and marketing. So I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, especially because there were a lot of people who said today was their first time finding out about what we do and who we are. So, all right. I'm going to have to improvise if my screen continues to do this. Okay, so I, my name is Carol Pinder. I'm the owner and managing director of Island Dreams Management. I have a bachelor's in psychology. My master's is in communication and leadership. I have been an entrepreneur for 11 years. Um, I have also been hired to conduct training for five different grant programs over the last two years. So I've been hired by the U.S. Embassy to be a facilitator for all. I was hired by the Office of the Prime Minister. That's how our company, Island Dreams Management, got started in the first place. I was brought on as a trainer in marketing for the Office of the Prime Minister for a grant that they were giving out to Grand Bahamian business owners. The Red Cross in Grand Bahama and Abaco, you heard some of them said they're from the Abaco cohort. We have done trainings for the grants programs with the Red Cross and for the Grand Bahama Port Authority. And so I have a very extensive background when it comes to grant programs. I will say that Tyrone or I are not 
affiliated with Access Accelerator. I don't want to say it now. We're not affiliated with Access Accelerator or Mercy Corps. This is not on behalf of Access Accelerator or Mercy Corps. This is seeing a need that there are a lot of small business owners that could be applying for these grants, but they just don't have the in-depth knowledge in order to apply for them. And we wanted to help. And so don't say, you know what? I went to Corel's. No, no, this, this is just us giving you information to make it possible for you to really apply and be competitive when you apply. And when I finish the presentation, I'm going to tell you about some of the things that they're asking for and some of the requirements. Mercy Corps, for those who are in Grand Bahama and Abaco, you are entitled to Mercy Corps and Access Accelerator. If you are located outside of Grand Bahama or Abaco, you are only eligible for Access Accelerator. However, that goes up to $5,000. So $5,000 is something good to get. Um, so we will tell you after exactly what they want from those programs. But I just want you to know that so I had some background on the other end of doing the training for a lot of people who apply for these programs. The other thing is I've been the winner of five grant programs. I like to apply. Uh, Manuska came on here earlier and she said she's in it to win it. I'm the same. If anything comes up and they need someone to apply, I'm going to apply because what you could say, no, it, I, I'm going to apply. And everybody who came on tonight, apply, whether you get it or not, apply, because the most that they can say is no, just apply. And so I, because I'm always applying every time an opportunity comes up, I have been awarded five grant opportunities, one by the U.S. Embassy. I've been awarded three by the Young Leaders of America Institute, and I've been awarded one by the Grand Bahama Ford Authority. That $5,000 from the Grand Bahama Ford Authority is how I started Island Dreams Management. So you don't need a whole lot of money to start your company if you're here for the first time and you don't have a business yet. It definitely is possible. So branding. Branding is the process of communicating a unique selling proposition or differential that sets a product or service apart from the competition. So what does that mean? It's a lot of mumbo jumbo. So what does that mean? Basically, when you're branding, you're saying, what problem do you solve and why should I allow you to solve it for me over anyone else? Uh, I think it was... What's his name? His name is escaping me from Jeff Bezos from Amazon. He said, you know, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So it is the impression. It is the promise. It is what people know you for. And they, when people talk about you and talk about your business, they should be able to say what problem you solve and why they should allow you to solve it because there might be other people who do the same thing. And so I need you to understand that concept because when you're going into ask for a grant, you need to communicate. I don't care if it's for Access Accelerator, it's for Mercy Corps, or it's for another organization. You need to effectively communicate how are you solving that problem and why are people coming to you to solve that problem? So if you do not, if you're not able to answer those two questions, or if you're taking notes, write that down. If you're not able to answer those two questions, then that's going to be a stumbling block when you're applying for the grant, because it's a very competitive process. Okay, so the next thing that people want to know when you're applying for that grant is how do you communicate this to everyone? How do you let people know what problem you solve and why you're the best person to solve that problem? So I want to give you some tips about how to build a brand. So if you're taking notes or if you are not on your camera phone, you could just take a picture of the slide. So the first thing is, I said, identify the problem you want to solve. You're not in business to make money. You're in business to solve a problem, to provide a solution. So what is the solution that you are providing? You need to understand that and you need to be able to effectively communicate what is the problem you're solving. Then again, the unique thing about you, what makes you stand out? What makes you different? So we help companies. The problem we solve is there are a lot of companies who want to brand and market their, their products or their services in a way, and they can't get in front of their ideal clients. They want to get in front of the people that are actually going to pay money for their services. So they want to know how to position themselves in front of that company. What strategy is going to work? How can I be effective? How can I be consistent? How can I be clear? How can I offer services that they want? How can I make sure that the value I offer is something that is going to have traction with a lot of people? So we solve that problem for people. Okay, so that's what we solve. Why were the best people to do it? I listed the credentials earlier. Of why even tonight when I came out, we're solving the problem of you want to apply for a grant and you want to know how to make sure that your grant is competitive, your application is competitive. Why are we the best? Because of the fact that I've been awarded several grants and I've been on the training end of several participants who came into grant programs. And so what's the unique value proposition? Having that background. For me and my business, I have a bachelor's in psychology and a master's in communication and leadership. You may say, wait, 
but you offer branding and marketing. You call yourself a brand strategist. You don't have a degree in marketing. Actually, that what, that's what makes me unique because I studied psychology. I studied the way that people think. So when I sit down in a strategy session with a client, I'm not just saying these are best marketing practices. These are practices of people because I study people. I study customer relationships with a background in psychology. So that's a unique aspect that we're bringing to the table when we sit down with a client with a one-on-one. -on -one. Another thing that you need to do is identify your ideal client. I often ask people, and I, uh, uh, true or false, true or false, everybody's your ideal client. Write it in the chat. True or false, everyone is your ideal client. Everyone is your ideal client. True or false, write it in the chat. Everyone is my ideal client. Everybody, false, false. Oh, these people are going to take my class. That's right, false. True, no, you didn't, don't worry. If you said true, if you in a class with me, then we probably didn't get to that yet. But no, everyone is not your ideal client. There are certain people who want what you have. There are certain people who want what you have. Everybody does not want what you have, and that's okay. If you're a high-end brand, the people who don't have a lot of funds don't want to come to you. They just don't. There are people who, like, I'm at a stage where I can't invest in marketing and branding. I'm not even there yet. I'm not even thinking about it. That's fine. Our strategy sessions are $250. Everybody does not want to drop $250 to sit down and go over strategies that can move their business forward. However, business owners that have been in the game for a little while and have tried things their way for a while and they're trying to grow, they've been a one person for two or three years and they realize that they're only making a certain level of income and they want to take their income to a new level. They want to take their clientele to a new level. They want to get more people who like their brand in front of them. They're, really, they're willing to drop $250. So that is my point when I say everybody's not your client and I'm fine with that. And you need to be fine with that. You need to get so specific about the people you're gonna help so that you can maximize how you're gonna help them. So another thing when you're applying for a grant is they need to know that you know who you're talking to. They need to know that you know who you're going after. The fourth one is brand positioning. And a lot of people go to the brand positioning, which is becoming visually appealing. And if you have questions, I see someone raising their hand. So we're in a webinar format, so your mic cannot open up. But what you can do is in the question and answer bottom box on the bottom, you could put a question in there if it's a burning question, and we'll make sure I get to it at the end. Okay, so if you have a burning question, put it in the question and answer box, but we won't be able to open your mic because of the format that we're on. All right, so when it comes to brand positioning, a lot of people, they, they invest in this first and they do this before they identify if people actually want their product. I honestly, genuinely believe before you invest a lot of money on a professional website, before you invest money on logo, before you invest money on a, a marketing branding email, a branded email of at islanddreamsmanagement.com, before you invest in headshots, before you invest in all of those things saying, this is my product, this is what we're going to do. This is my social media page. It doesn't cost that much investment. But before you invest in a graphic designer to spend all of this money, you need to have a proven concept. A lot of times we don't have a proven concept if people actually want this product. So if you're a startup and you don't know if people actually want that, con that, that product, you need to test it out in the market for a while first. And so that can mean just getting some kind of logo on Canva until you've tested it, doing a WordPress or easy a website that goes up until you test it. But we didn't get a professional person to design our website until we had proven concept that we're actually selling the things that people want to buy and actually getting really structured. But a lot of you, before you answer number four of, I have my logo, I have my website, I have my branded email, I have my headshots, I have my graphic designer, I have, before you start investing in all of these things that makes your brand visually appealing, know that you have a proven concept. Know that you have people who are willing to pay for what you're offering. And you need to do that by doing number one, two, and three. Identifying that ideal client, knowing how you're the, why you're the best person to solve it, and what problem are you solving. Then you can get to brand positioning, but it needs to be visually appealing. And so that's another reason you need to understand your ideal client. When I say visually appealing, you're appealing to women, but the colors that you have don't speak to the women. The format of what you, you have doesn't speak to the, the pain points or it doesn't relate. And so you need to understand all of that before you said, yes, I need a technology grant because I need a website and because I need a logo and I need all of this. And then you've invested all of these dollars and you're, there's no proof of concept that this business makes sense. You've invested all of these dollars and you're actually going to now change up your services because you don't even really feel passionate about this particular thing. You need to really analyze before you apply to pay for a website and pay for this and pay for that, that you have the first three sorted out. Okay. And the last one is create brand awareness. That's one of the things that we're doing tonight. We're creating brand awareness. 
we partnered, like I said, we partnered with Tyronda when we were deciding to do this because we knew that this was going to, to help to create brand awareness, not only for her, but it's continued brand awareness for us. When you put yourself, a lot of times people don't like to put themselves in positions where I have to give away something free or I have to offer something, but that's how you're creating brand awareness. Nobody knows what you do. So again, remember I talked about proof of concept. So you have to expose your brand to different people so that people can say whether they like it or not. And you have to get your foot in the door because before I spend money with you, our coins are important to us. Say yes in the chat if that's true. My coins are important to me. So if my coins are important to me, then I'm just not going to spend it if I don't know that this is really going to be valuable for me. I have to know that this is going to be valuable before I spend my coins. And so that's why we do things that where you offer something free so that I can be able to see if this is beneficial for me or if it's even something I need. I offer free consultations. The reason we do free consultations is we may get in a meeting and you decide that you need a social media manager, somebody to upload on your page every day. That is something something that Corel does not do. But I do have a database of several people that I feel will be very qualified to fulfill that for you. And I can give you that referral. But if you came and you paid me, and at the end of the meeting, I told you that I will not manage your page, then you would be very upset. And so that's why we offer free consultations, because then it's going to work for you. It's going to work for us and everybody's happy. And we're all trying to grow in business. So we should all be trying to help each other. Okay. So you got to create brand awareness and build an audience. So what is marketing? A lot of, um, I want to use one of my friends as an example. She has a business that grew tremendously in the first two years. It just grew. And one of the things that she said to me is, she said, Corel, like, I don't know, the business just grew and, and, and I didn't do any, any marketing. It's just the business grew. In the chat, true or false, marketing and advertising are the same thing. In the chat, true or false, marketing and advertising are the same thing. Marketing and advertising are the same thing. True or false? True or false? True or false? Oh yeah, we have some smart people. Either we have a lot of smart people or people are just catching on and saying, you know what? Everybody else is saying false. So let me just go with that. Let me just go with that. Okay, good. So it is false. Marketing and branding are not the same thing. I mean, marketing and advertising are not the same thing. Advertising is an element of marketing, but marketing and advertising aren't the same thing. So I want to use her as an example as I go through the four P's of marketing. So one of the P's that, that stand out that doesn't fall under the four P, but is something that you need to know is you're identifying your ideal client. So the way that you identify your ideal client is you need to collect data on that client. You need to know their pain points because again, you're solving a problem. So when you communicate to the grant, when you have to do a business profile, so on all of the, both grants, you either have to hand in a business plan or you have to do a business profile. And in that business plan and in that business profile, you have to say who you're talking to and why and how you're going to serve them. So when you collect data on the people that you serve, you need to know their pain points. What's their problem? If you have a skincare company, is it that they have bad skin and they want their skin cleared up? If you do photography, if it is it that they want quality photos that they can get back and a, a very you know efficient time? If you're a graphic designer, you want people who want quality graphics. Like depending on what it is, you need to understand what their pain point is. Is it if you sell baked goods? Is it the fact that they want things delivered to them and they want to be able to order 48 hours in advance? Is it that they want to be able to order with someone who has the process online so they don't have to hunt somebody down with cash? What is the pain point of your client? What is your pain point? Uh, one of the things that you have to understand when you're in business is that you are meeting someone else's needs. You're not in business so that they can pay you. You're in business so that you can solve their problem. You find out different things about them. Where do they work? How much do they make? Are they male or female? Getting data on that client so you know exactly who you're serving. You can do that through surveys. You can do that through focus, group, focus groups or observational research, but you just need to do research. You can even, some people before they open a store, you know, they will spend hours in a certain area of where they're going to open up so they can see how much foot traffic and how much cars drive by there. Those are things that people do so that they can know if this location is going to be a good area. If you're communicating to them that, oh, I want this online payment software or I need a website. But the people that you serve don't use websites. The people, the people that come to you don't spend that kind of money. They're not online. 
So why do you need the website? They don't pay online. The people that you serve don't use credit cards. So why do you need that as an online system? So that's why you need to identify ideally who you're talking to so that you could communicate in the grant. Like I deal with working professionals. Most of them, they're always working on their laptops, always working on their computers. And so if I'm more efficient in sending emails, if I'm more efficient in sending out a, a way for them to pay, if I have a website so that they can easily book me and work with me, if I have a website, I deal with very high-end clients in my clothing store. And so therefore they would like to pay online and then be able to pick up, but I do not have an online shop. And so that's why I need it because they are, you need to communicate to them in your business profile or your business plan, who you're going after and why, who you're going after needs this. They say it directly. They need to know that you're, this is going to help you increase clients. This is going to help you to be more efficient when you serve your clients. So you have to tell them who you serve in. Everybody understand that? Type yes in the chat if you're still with me. Type yes in the chat if you're still with me, but they're going to need you to say how you're going to make, why is this more efficient for your client? Why is this going to increase your clientele? But if you don't know your clientele, you can't tell them why it's more efficient. You can't tell, me, tell them why it's going to increase it if you don't know who you're talking to. You can't tell them that. And so you need to understand who you're talking to. So the next thing in the four P's of marketing, and I said, I'm going to use my friend. I got five more minutes before I have to bring Tyronda on. So one of the things that you, uh, she said, you know, Carol, I don't do any marketing. I just, I just, so I told you marketing and advertising are not the same thing. So you see that bubble that says promotion. That's what advertising is. Everything else is what goes into making up your business, but that's also what goes into marketing. Marketing is coming into place from you decide on your product or service. From you decide, do I have a good product or service that solves a problem or brings joy? From you decide that. From you decide, do I have a product that is that brings joy? That you know, so is it something that can be delivered virtually? And so her product is so good that you know it speaks for itself. Like everybody, it was a product that some that people want. Do you have, like I said, is it a proven concept? She was someone who went to school to specialize in it, so she knew going to school, being in school, studying. She had a lot of feedback from people, so she was able to perfect her craft and perfect her services because she had teachers analyzing if this service is good. For those of us who may have not gone to school for this particular thing, do you have someone giving you feedback and analyzing the service and product you have? Do you have somebody with expertise? So she had a, so she's saying that my, to, to me, oh, I haven't done marketing. You went to school for this recently. And so the fact that you went to school for it recently, you were able to perfect your product and service and had people critique it and have people give feedback. And that in itself is marketing. That's a part of marketing, making sure that that service or product is perfected. And so did you do that? That's a part of marketing place and location, knowing that her location had to be at a certain area where people were going to come, the accessibility of getting there, the accessibility of having a presence on social media, having a, pr a presence on a website. She charges very high end prices. So if you charge very high end prices, you can't just have a social media account. She knew she had to have a website. So she has a website and that's a place. So place and location is where should you sell it and how do you deliver it to the market? How can the market do business with you? So if they need to pay online because of the people you're talking to, your place and location is also a part of marketing. In certain areas, Areas you would not go. Whether you live in Freeport, Nassau, or Abaco, wherever you live, there are certain areas you may or may not go depending on the kind of clientele you are. So you have to be strategic in where's my location going to be. If I know that I don't have a location that's favorable right now, maybe I do delivery. Maybe the people that you cater to are working busy moms and they like things delivered. Maybe they don't want to deal with the back and forth. So therefore you have to send them a link to a site. But all of that is a part of marketing. So she's saying, I don't market, but yeah, the location you chose, the way that you represent, the way that you present your products on, on social media and all of that, that's marketing. Price. Price, the value that you bring. What value are you bringing for the cost that you're charging? A lot of times when people are thinking, what should I charge? How should I charge it? You know, uh, one of the, my pet peeves is when I go to stores and they say they don't have credit card machines because it's going to cost you more money. Just charge me more money. You causing me money having to drive to the bank to go to the ATM and come back and pay with a credit card. Just charge more money. What value are you bringing? There's a, it's a convenience that they're paying for when I have to pay with a credit card online or if I have to pay with a credit card in the store. And so what value are you bringing to your customer? So she brought a great value for the price that she was offering. So again, because the price matched the value, marketing. So again, she's saying, I don't do any marketing, girl. I just, I just keep on having this influx of clients. 
You have a product and service that was that was tested, that you studied and got feedback on. You decided on a place and a location that is comfortable. And she, the way she designed inside was to her ideal client. She made it very luxurious, very high end. So therefore, someone who is luxurious and high end who wants to pay a price, when they walked into her establishment, they said, yes, I would like to spend money here because I liked it. All of that is a part of marketing, having detail about how your location looks, having detail about how your website looks, having detail about how the social media page appears. All of that is marketing. Your price is marketing. And the last one is promotion. So what she really meant is she didn't pay for paid advertising, but, uh, but promotion is also advertising, public relation, and promotional strategy. I will tell you her strategy and use it. Use it. This is her strategy. She has results and she's consistent with posting those results. That's what it is. That's the strategy. She don't, when she said, Corella, I did not pay for marketing. She meant that she did not pay for paid ads. She did not pay anyone for advertising. All she does is produce results. She takes great photos of those results and she consistently posts them. That's what she does. But that is a strategy. That is a strategy within itself. So when you are communicating to these grant applicants, have you produced results for your clients that you're going after? And because they want, that's going to make your proposal a lot more appealing. If you say that these are some of my clients, these are some of the people I've worked with, these are some of the results that I've been able to get for them. And this is why, you know, you should fund me so I can continue to produce results for them and continue to get more clients like them who want these results. Everybody understand that? And so her strategy is just results and consistency. And so that is something that you can easily, easily duplicate, but you need to communicate that. Okay. So the last thing is, why do you need a brand strategist? So like I said, tonight, we're going to talk about different ways to work with us. We have a membership club. I shout them out earlier, Creative Link Up. That's $30 a month. Uh, but we also have strategy sessions that are really good for people who want to deep dive for their individual business. So why do people need a brand strategist? They want someone who studied the market to give professional guidance. I just said that we were on um, our membership club right before we came on here tonight. And the guest speaker, she was doing a deep dive into social media. And she talked about influencers because she's an influencer. And she made a point that I wanted to make right here. You are a genius in whatever field that you do. Type your uh, business in the chat, whatever you do. If you do photography, if you do food, if you do event planning, get a little marketing for yourself. Type it in the chat. Whatever you do, type it in the chat. Get a little marketing for yourself going on right now. The point is, whatever you're typing in the chat that you say that you do, let me read some in here. We got massage therapists, we got makeup, we got speech therapists, we got transportation, we got gifting, we got health products, interior design, we got event planning, and run coaching, naturally, beauty industry, fashion, looking maker. My point is, Jeff, you are a genius at running, you're a genius at massage therapy, you are a genius at event planning, you are a genius, genius at makeup, which you aren't a genius in is marketing and branding. No, no shade because you try and study to be a genius in your particular field. And so when you're spending hours perfecting your craft as an event planner and spending hours perfecting your craft as a run coach and spending hours perfecting your craft as a brand strategist, we're spending hours trying to learn the new trends about branding and marketing, spending hours um, reading up on how the strategies and what strategies to use. When I have a strategy session, I have to prepare and deep dive into your industry and deep dive into the latest trends that come with branding and marketing and how to market. And so therefore, when I come to you, it's like, good, you need an expert. One of the things I wanted to tell you you guys, QuickBooks software is a good thing to add to your uh, application. And so I am not good in finance. My genius is not in finance. So I just contacted the person who, who I bring to my cohorts to speak on finance, and I'm going to hire him. I'm going to hire him to transfer all of my financial da data from the platform that I'm on now into QuickBooks. And then after he does that, then I'm going to be on QuickBooks for the next six months. And we're going to do a two hour session to get my finances to make sure we're in order and I know where my finances are. That bill for him is $325, but I need to pay it. I need to pay it because I'm not a genius in finance. I'm not trying to be a genius in finance. I need to pay the expert the money to do what I need to do. Okay. And that's Frazier and Associates. If you're interested, we'll send the link to you. Okay. So another reason is people, you feel stuck. You need structure and clarity. A lot of clients that come to us, they're just, they're just aiming for clarity. Another one, people, they want to grow and they need someone to make it extremely simple for them. They need someone to kind of lay it out. Because I said a lot tonight and I know you're glad we're recording and you might've taken notes, but it's a lot. And so when you do that one-on-one -on -one strategy session, it's someone taking their time walking with you to say, what's the best practice for your business? You need accountability. 
Um, oh, I told Linda, she's a run coach that I was going to mention this tonight. Another reason why um, I think my friend does really well, because she posts all the time, and I think Linda does really well, is because I don't know what my friend's background is, but Linda's an athlete. And so one of the advantages, I, I was an athlete growing up. I swam from 10 to competitively from 10 to 18. The requirement of swimming competitively is you have to wake up every morning at 4.30 a.m. to go to swim in a very cold pool. And every day after school, you have to go to swimming. So you swim like 10 times a week. And having that coaching, discipline is drilled in you. So discipline comes naturally for someone who has been an athlete. But so when people are like, oh, I can't stick with it, I can't probably because you don't have the background of somebody who has been accountable and you just need practice with it. It's not that you won't ever be disciplined. It's just that you need accountability because it's going to take some time to get there. Being a dis disciplined person doesn't happen overnight. You need accountability. You need a coach. You need feedback. I had a coach for eight years. Um, and so you need a coach to do that. So when you like, oh, I don't need no one to help me in my business. Yeah, you kind of do because you don't have that discipline within yourself. I don't have discipline within myself to keep up with finances. So I'm going to go and see a finance expert. When my team grows, I'll go and see an HR expert. But the point is you need an expert to make you make sure you're accountable and feeding you with that information. And then the last one is you want to maximize your return on your investment. Take a picture of that slide. I'm about to move it so we can move into Tyronda. But you want to maximize on your return on your investment. If you are asking them to invest in your business, then you need to make sure that the, you are going to maximize how much you do it. So one of the things that Tyronda is going to talk about is digital marketing. And so if you know that that is something you want to include in your proposal, think about doing a free session with us. Cathedra is on the chat. I'm going to allow her to, I'm going to allow Cathedra to drop the information for our free our free uh, consultations that we do. So if you're interested, we'll put the free consultation, Cathedral will drop it in the chat. And let's chat if you wanna have a, a consultation about a strategy session or a consultation about the membership group that we have um, so that you can learn more of, or just you wanted to do a session because you wanted to prepare your application when it came to digital marketing. That's something you could do. So Tyronda, I wanna welcome you. You should be able to share your screen so you could share. So Tyronda is gonna share with you some technology tips that you can add to your application when you decide to apply like, okay, I need to make sure that I am putting this in my application. And so get your pens. If the pens weren't out already, make sure to write these down because when it's time for your application, it would be good to say that these are the things that I want. These are the things I need. So Tyronda, the floor is yours. Okay, good night, Corel. Great nuggets. I am taking notes still. <laughs> and I wanna thank you once again for inviting me to share information on this forum. So good night, everyone. Um, as indicated by Corel, my name is Tyronda Glinton. Um, by profession, I am an IT business analyst, also known as a project manager. And today I'm going to briefly share with you some, some tips on what you should look for when applying for this uh, technology innovation grant. So as I said before, my name is Tyrone Glinton. I am an IT business analyst currently also working at the Department of Transformation and Digitization in the Office of the Prime Minister. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in computer information systems, a professional scrum master, uh, my CBP in project management, and another lot of, I guess, technical certifications. So that's just a little bit of background about myself. So I'm gonna get into what we really, 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 really come, um, came here for. So our company, TG Consulting Services, is an IT consulting and training company that helps business owners and corporations successfully implement the right technology for their business. So the industries that I work with includes finance, government, small businesses, nonprofits, transport and aviation, legal, maritime, healthcare. I have nonprofit again. Um, <laughs> and our specialties is in business analysis, project management, technical writing, quality assurance and training. So we all know that doing business in the Bahamas is not easy, especially in the government sector, but we are um, constantly, uh, continuously right now working on that. And soon you will see a lot of piloted services that are going to be coming on board, but I'm not talking about them today. We're just going to be talking generally about the red tape and the slow and inefficient processes that exist in the public and private sector. A lot of times, you know, the government gets slack for it. Um, but to, to be honest, we experience this when we go into doctor's offices, when we go into stores, even trying to get a service on Facebook, usually people would say, or oh, inbox for price. And that's, you know, that's something that is a pet peeve for a lot of people. 
Um, so yes, while we need um, technology, if it's not done correctly, um, you can actually find yourself in more problems um, and, and then success with the wrong technology implemented. Um, as you saw from big corporations um, last year, over $900 billion was wasted um, in implementing the wrong technology. So before you can identify and implement any technology in your business, there are three critical things that you should pay attention to when you're applying for this technology grant. So as you can see, um, this is a screenshot from the actual um, technology and innovation grant. And I wanna draw attention to three key areas that they made um, or highlighted in their, in their documentation. Okay, recognizing the impact of COVID-19 that had on small businesses, the Access Accelerator and Mercy Corps is offering, offering a technology innovation grant um, so businesses can thrive in a digital economy. But there are three areas that you should pay special attention to. The first thing they want to uh, highlight is they want whatever you're doing must improve the productivity and efficiency uh, of your business through increased access to existing technology so and processes. So this is basically saying that whatever you're implementing, whatever technology solution you're applying for, it must improve the productivity and efficiency of your business through the existing technologies you may have and your processes. And we're going to talk about why processes is so important before you apply for this grant. They also made mention or highlighted um, to facilitate management and integration of medium to small medium enterprises into the national and global value chains. So my understanding of this is basically saying whatever you're proposing it must or should um, take into consideration how is it going to impact the national and global value, um, I guess an economy, right? And lastly, facilitate the adoption and use of developed technology, technologies and digital transformation applications. So for me personally, this basically speaks to not just implementing the technology, but also showing how the technology or the solution that you're going to, or the grant, sorry, that you're going to apply for um, helps to helps with the adoption of that technology. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that part um, in the next slides. All right, so what this basically shows to me that with these three points, there are three essential things that we should co consider before applying. And there is overall three essential building blocks um, that we should consider before applying for this grant. And I said we because I, I'm, I'm applying as well. All right, so before you get into anything related to technology, but there's something we call the three P's in the tech world, people, process, and then your platform, also known as technology. A lot of times when people implement technology into their business, they do not consider how the technology will affect the people in their business, that whether that be your customers or your staff, before you implement any technology, consider how that technology can be pivotal to one or re uh, reduction of them accepting the, that technology. So for example, you went ahead and implement a new point of sale system, but you did not engage your staff in the user acceptance process, or you did not include them in the training process. So these are the people that actually would have the most likely use the system, but you did not consider them before and after the implementation of this technology. So look at your current staff. If it's a small, you know, some for most businesses is usually a party of one or two the most, but even if it's a party of one or two, ensure that even the technology that you're going to use, that is something that it, first of all, fits your needs and also your customers and yourself, that you are able to actually um, learn and use this platform. And if you have a staff, staff member, ensure that you get their input on what requirements they would need in order for them to make successful use of this system. Um, most systems, they usually have a front end, which is usually utilized by the customer, and then a back end, which is usually used by 
the administrators or the or the plot well, I should say the customers is the front end and the back end is usually done by the employees or their staff so see how that system works well they call it user um, friendly for the customer and then also yourself or your staff okay um let me move on to the next slide the next thing is very 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 important that most people don't make note of is their processes so as we know, processes are a series of steps to reach a desired goal. So if I ask you right now, if you have your processes documented in your business, can you honestly say you have that in already on paper? So for example, from a customer reach out to you for one of your services, do you have that process step by step laid out in, a, in either if it's written down or if it's in a Word document, do you have that written out? And if you could please just indicate in the chat if you do actually have that um, written out. If you do not, the reason why this is important is because you can go ahead and let's say, I, um, like I said before, a customer relationship management system, you could go ahead and implement that. But let's say there's an, let's say you work in an industry where there's an approval process before a customer can get something. Um, or let's say, for example, okay, before I can offer this particular service, it has to go through these checks and balances. If you don't have that process documented, the solution you may have may not work for you. So it's important to document those processes. Just like how we get up in the morning, we go and take a bath, we brush our teeth, we you know fix up, put on our clothes, have something to eat. All of those are a series of steps that takes us to work or take us to wherever we're going. It's the same thing applies in your business. So it's important before you implement any technology that you have the process for your business, whether that's onboarding a new customer, whether that's it's issuing an invoice, whether that's um, uh, you know allowing a person to pick up from your, your facility, all of those are processes and they should be documented before you uh you be before you go ahead and get technology and lastly what we really came to talk about is um your platform so after you have your you know your people you you engage them in the process for finding out what solution you want and making sure that it's user friendly for both the customer and the staff member and yourself then you went ahead and and document your processes to ensure that whatever technology solution will work for you then you are a better position to choose your platform. So there are top, my top four technology solution recommendation includes the first thing, which is the enterprise resource planning um, software. Now, usually this would have been used for bigger companies, but now that there is such a need for all of these platforms, uh, companies have now made this particular solution um, user-friendly and accessible for small businesses. So this basically just combines all of the solutions into one platform. So for example, let's say you, you sell a product and you need a inventory management system. And then you also need a customer relationship management system to onboard your new customers, to automate your emails, to automate your invoices, to automate your proposals. And then let's say you have a, let's say a bigger um, company where you actually have staff and you need a human resource information management system. You need all of these things, but you would want to have them in one spot. This is what the enterprise resource planning system does for you. Now, if you, you may say, oh, I may not require all of these um, tools right now. I'm just a really small um, business. What I do suggest at least you have for, especially for service-based companies is customer relationship management solutions, which would actually automate your entire process when you're dealing with your customers from them being able to uh, book an appointment appointment with you, but for you to be automatically generating an invoice to them, also for you to be able to automatically, let's say you do online sessions, it'll automatically send them emails to remind them, well, first of all, to let them know when the online system, online um, session is, and then remind them um, of that date. So the customer relationship management solution actually deals with everything of automate, automating the customer relationship management between you and your client. And then if you have a product-based business, I would um, suggest a point of sale system. And Corel made mention of one of them already. Um, Shop, uh, Kill QuickBooks is more of a financial management system, but you have Shopkeep and Lightspeed. 
And for customer relationship management solutions, you can have like the Dubsado or HoneyBook. Um, another popular ERP, if you want that and if it works for your business, is Udu, Odoo, sorry, Stratascreen and ERP Next. Okay, and then you have a number of local companies who actually implement those. Now, I know with the uh, Access Accelerator Grant, they ask for wiring information, and a lot of the a lot of these services are cloud based. And so, if there is a way, you could probably negotiate with one of the local companies like Customs Computers or Micronet to see if they could actually include that as a, a part of their quote for you to be able to source that um, cloud-based service and then for them to implement it, then that could be a possible solution to um, going around that, 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 I guess, that loophole. Because I know um, these uh, platforms like Dubsado and Honeybook, they do not provide wiring information. Okay. Um, the next most important thing, um, Corel made mention of this already, is your website. Um, your website is like your own personal real estate on the internet. And although social media pages are quite great in capturing clients, 93% of business purchase decisions start with um, search engine optimization or customers looking on Google to find a website. And this is especially useful for businesses who want to be um, be able to be found outside of the Bahamas. Like if you want your clients outside of the Bahamas, chances are they're not just going to look for you on, on Facebook or Instagram unless they have already heard of you. But with obviously with your website, uh, with looking on Google, they're able to see all of the options that are available to them. So you have two options most of the times um, when, it's, when it comes to getting a website. You have pre-built web websites that include WordPress, Wix, Shopify, Squareface, and Weebly. And these are websites that have templates that exist for you to be able to make these adjustments yourself. You don't require too much technical knowledge. You don't have to um, do any coding at all. You just have to make the adjustment to your content um, and then obviously pay their monthly or yearly fee. The great thing about websites like Wix, um, WordPress, Shopify, Squarespace and we believe that is that the hosting on everything and in terms of selecting your domain name, paying for your hosting, paying for your SSL certificate, all of that can be uh, packaged when you use their platforms versus um, it being coded, which will obviously be more money because the person, you'd have to pay for that person expertise. And then most of the times, you know, it would incur more cost for hosting because they'd have to find that as a separate fee. So there are one or two things I want to highlight when you choose in your website. Ensure, let's say if you outsource that service, ensure that your web developer um, has an SSL certificate on your website, which is basically the lock. I don't know if you went on a website and you see the little lock on the website. It's an encryption to ensure extra data security on your on your website. It encrypts your website information, and also uh, include a privacy policy that basically indicates what when you customers use um, your website if you're collecting data from them. What are your policies related to their data? Um, so make sure that it's included when you're outsourcing that service. Um, like I said, these are the popular ones: WordPress, Shopify, Wix, and Square. Um, Square face. And uh, this isn't the last one, sorry. The payment processor now, Coven is going to be able to talk more of this. But I believe that one of the biggest impediments for Bohemian businesses once COVID 19 hit is that they were not able to collect uh, payments from their customers and they were not even, even able to you know, showcase the service they, services they have. And then obviously, like I say, collect those payments online. So whether you go in an online, or online store or physical location, you should provide your customers with the most options available to pay. So even if you don't want to you know, accept payments online, which I suggest you do, you should at least consider having a credit card, a debit card machine in your facility if you have a brick and mortar so that they would have several options to do that. Um, with the advent now of the central bank signed dollar and um, Canoe and Mobile Assist, that is another alternative. But I really, really appreciate RBC's um, online banking because they work along um, with a vendor that, you know, so a payment, I don't want to go too technical, but allows your payments to be go to go directly into your business bank account, which is very efficient. 
Um, and lastly, the four, the top four technology solution is digital marketing. Um, like Karel mentioned, there are, there are many different op options and every company, every company's success um, depends on two very important factors and that's sales and marketing. If it ain't making money, it really ain't making no sense. So if you can't drive customers to your website or you can't drive them to your pitch to be able to, first of all, know that your, you know, your solution or whatever service or product exists, then that's the first problem. The second thing is if you can be able to make the sale through through accepting payments, um, that's another problem for you. So there are a number of digital marketing opportunities or platforms that exist, sorry. There is social media marketing, then there's email marketing, then you have web analy analytics and search engine optimization, which basically allows your um, website to be seen online, video creation and streaming, then you have affiliate marketing and then you have the graphics. And there are a number of local companies who do this, but obviously I would love to mention Corel because she's helped me greatly in the first strategy session we had, Island Dreams Management. And then um, you have other, uh, other companies such as Creative Helium, Church Boy Photography, and Castle Media, who helps with like the creative visual side of the digital marketing. marketing. Then you have graphic artists like Creative Pixel, Beautiful Creative, and a number of graphic artists who will help to um, build your digital marketing um, systems for you. So if you say, let's say you have all of these things, there are some things you should probably consider to, to, to add. So if you have all four of those first um, options, you should consider adding a part of your uh, proposal or your invoice, a digital camera. And this is, would be great for companies, especially who have um, live streaming options, or let's say you, let's say you offer an online course, if, or like Corel, she does uh, these sessions. The the digital camera provides a better quality um, for for this purpose. Also, let's say you have a product and you don't want to always hire a photographer. It would be really great to have that digital camera for to to you know to take your product product photography. Then you have the learning resource management solution. So let's say if you offer online courses. You have um, tools like Thinkific and Teachable and Udemy that offer um, that offer customers the ability to upload their pre-recorded online courses um, and obviously generate income that way. Then you need to consider your cybersecurity um, needs. Um, this would also include your vi virtual private networks, your firewalls, your antivirus that needs to be in place, whether or not you are a big or a small company, if you're collecting any form of data, you should have some form of protection on your system. And then your IT policies and assessments, and this includes the data protection policies, your cybersecurity policies, your terms and conditions. So let's say you go ahead and you started to collect money on online, you need the policy to indicate, and like I said, um, COVID would be able to elaborate further, but you need policies online to say, how are you going to refund your customers? You need to also ensure that they are piece, the, the vendor is PCI compliant. And like I said, he will talk further in that. And lastly, IT training. You got the new system, but you don't know how to use it. So you should probably consider, um, you know, getting some training to, to use and implement that system for you. So um, now that I have recommended those uh, items in the toolkit, if you need any guidance or, you know, any guidance and reference in that, we are usually offer our services for $200 that, that includes an assessment of your current technology environment. So you don't know what it is that you need for your business. You, you have one or two systems in place, but you don't know if it works for you. We can help you design and identify the best um, ERM system for you. We also, ERP, sorry, system for you. We also help you design your, or map and document your processes. We also access your company's website, or even if you just need someone to hold your hand when you go in ahead and meeting with any vendor. Like you really don't know. I know a lot of people, they say technology professionals speak another language. And when they started to speak in technical terms, you really don't understand what they're saying. If you need somebody to help you with that selection process, we are here for you. So that being said, this is my contact information. If you would like any more details and reference of what I do, what I offer, please feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And this is my website. 
I am going to be my own worst enemy. I myself will take full advantage of COVID's um, uh, information because I myself need to do set up my online uh, <laughs> payment options. But for now, in the interim, you can uh, book any appointments um, on the link listed above. And you can also visit my website. I'm offering a free technology um, checklist for you to be able to review in the items that are missing also from your business, you could take advantage from, of that. So anyway, with that being said, thank you for your time and I am done. Thank you, Tyronda. That was amazing, amazing. People are saying in the chat, if you felt like that was great information, please let's pick up Tyronda in the chat. And I wanna let you know, there are 76 people on this call, 76 people on this call. And with 76 people on this call, Tyronda has a very limited pool of people that she's going to take on one-on-one. -on -one. And like I said, this whole webinar came about because when she just had a conversation with me of, no, Corel, you have some technology, but there's some other technology you need to implement. Uh, we talked about doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation with people because she told you about the fact that you need a website. But one of the things that you really needed to know was what on my website is really going to convert sales? Because sometimes we have websites, let's be honest, some of, we, some of us, we have websites for pretty, but those websites aren't converting into sales. She's going to tell you what you need on that website to make sure it converts into sales. She's going to tell you, she listed all, Duzato, HoneyBook, this system, CRM system. Okay, Tyrande, that was a lot of systems. What system going to work for me? What system will work for my company? She's going to tell you that in that one-on-one. -on -one. She talks about the software and the different things. What software do I need to put on this paper to make sure that I'm going to get ahead? Digital marketing, that's something that we could talk about and she'll do a quick, a little overview. But this session isn't really about Island Dreams Management. I know you guys are going to be out there with us. And like I said, you're already on my email list. So I'm just going to continue to tell you all what we have going on. But Tyronda, this was all about her tonight and what she could offer you as far as technology. And I see from the chat that everybody felt like it was useful information. There is a limited spot. I'm going to ask a telcher to drop Tyronda's simply book me link in there. Normally a hour session with Tyronda is $200. Not only is she giving you an hour of her time for you to do the assessment with her, she's also going to review your application before you hand it in. Reviewing the application does not ensure that you are going to get a grant. However, it does help to make your grant application a lot more competitive. And if for whatever reason it's not chosen, now you know the next steps of where you need to move your business to when it comes to technology. She's going to do that deep dive with you. So if you are interested, her one-on-one -on -one is normally $200. For this session, she's offering it at $75. So I definitely want to encourage you to take advantage of that. Okay. Now, the last thing that I want to say I'll be, um, is don't leave after Covan because I went to a Mercy Corps meeting tonight. And so there's some specifics about Mercy Corps that I want you to know about what they said from Mercy Corps about how to prepare and what they're looking for and what, how many people are going to get the grant and what does that look like? So as soon as Covan finished, tells you about Figaro, which saved my life. I think my client is on here now who, who I sent the thing I'm to and she responded in two minutes by paying. Um, but this is, is just phenomenal. So after Covan speaks, I'm going to tell you about what Access Accelerator is saying they need and what Mercy Corps is saying they need and, you know, how competitive it is for some of these applications. But you guys can do it and you came here for the extra info. So Covan, the floor is yours and I'm going to pull up your slide. You're muted, Covan. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, sorry about that. All right, so good night. Good night, everybody. Uh, my name is Kovan Nixon. Um, I'm a business electronic sales specialist with RBC, our res responsibility for the family islands. And like Carell has been um, stating for the past couple of weeks, she's in love with Figaro. Um, <laughs> now, I just want to say that Figaro is not the only e-commerce platform that we have, now, I, but I recognize why she loves it so much. So just giving you a brief overview of the, of the other two. Um, we also offer plug and pay, like Toronto alluded to. And we also offer uh, First Atlantic Commerce. So with plug and pay and First Atlantic Commerce, those are for people who have websites. Uh, the setup fee for plug and pay is a one-time cost of $500 and $50 monthly. Uh, with First Atlantic Commerce, um, the minimum monthly fee is $180 per month. Um, First Atlantic Commerce, in all truth, is for more larger merchants, those who do a large volume of transactions. Um, plug and pay, on the other hand, is for more everyday merchants, those of you who have a website, those of you who, um, like we've been discussing tonight, you're looking to kind of broaden your base, increase your customer base, 
and you're looking to uh, take your business to the next level. Uh, but Figaro, uh, that's the main baby. Figaro right now, uh, the plan start at $14.99 a month, as it says here on, and there's a one-time $60 gateway activation fee. And I, what I love about Figaro is, Figaro is a platform that, it, it's e-commerce without the website. So Figaro has a number of different gateways, different payment methodologies that they use. Uh, with Figaro, you can just do invoicing if you don't have a website. So you can have an you can send an invoice to a customer, to a client, and the invoice has a pay now button that's attached to it. And the invoice, excuse me, when it's sent to them, the customer can then enter their card information and you get a notification of payment. Now settlement, settlement is now two settlement is two days after the initial payment is made, but it, it saves you a lot of time, it saves you a lot of administrative costs, and it saves you the hassle of having to try and track down a client for money, track down, try to track down a client for payment, having to wait on a check to clear, having to go and collect the check, or having to even go and accept mobile payment if you're on the go. Um, Figaro is fully customizable. It's quick and easy setup. For those of you who have um, a website, they also have a product called Figaro Shops, which we fail to put on the slide. But Figaro Shops is for those who are who would have the web, who have a website set up, and maybe the invoicing platform may not be uh, what they need. But if you have the website, you're looking to customize it, showcase your products, um, showcase what it is that you do. You can use you can use Figaro Shops. Um, it's available for all industries. Um, we have Island Dreams Management signed up as a client. We have. Um, a lot of the tourist industry, a lot of the tourism, people in the tourism industry have also signed up as well too. And we have a few taxi drivers who use it because they take bookings in advance. We have um, we have um, a paint store that uses it because they, during, especially during COVID-19, they were able to take orders, send out their invoices to clients. Um, we had a few bars, a few restaurants, everyone who needed to take orders who needed to send out uh, payment to customers or collect payment for customers online and they needed something cheap, not cheap, but inexpensive, sorry. Uh, something that was quick, something that was easy, something that was uh, mobile, they needed Figaro and they, they found Figaro to be very useful. And as it says in the last point, it's directly deposited to your account. So if you're an RBC merchant or you're thinking about merchant services or you're thinking about e-commerce and you're interested in Figaro or you want some more information, uh, you can get in touch with me and we can get you set up. If you don't have an account with us, we have everything now is through the COVID-19 policies, everything now is online. And the complete, sorry, not online, but everything now is done through email. So the account setup is done with our account officers via email. They can get in touch with you through email, through telephone. And there's no there's no money to book an appointment, go into the bank and get this thing sorted up and get this sorted up. So Figaro, um it's our newest product and it's really taken off and we found that a number of merchants have benefited from it and as you can see at the bottom if you use the code for the code 42 rdy uh, when signing up they give you five dollars off during this time so <laughs> that's good that's uh, good uh, i did have a question that came in earlier before i came out tonight and they were asking does it have to be transferred to a bahamian business account or like, does it have to be attached to a business account or can it be attached to a personal account? So as it stands right now, um, if, you're an, if you're an RBC merchant, I only can speak for our merchants. If you're an RBC merchant, Figaro will be attached to your business account. Okay, no personal. They, so they would have to get, they would have to get a business account if they want to attach um, Figaro to it. Correct. And one of the things that you mentioned is you do, like I said, I keep saying Figaro um, praises because I like to do the, manageable, like you say, the more cost effective one when coming in, but you mentioned plug and play being a $500 activation fee. So if you're applying for the that's grant, that's only a one-time fee, right? Activation for the plug and play. That's a, that's a one-time fee. So, so that's something that you could think about of putting on your application of that. I want to activate it. It's a one-time fee and it'll allow you, that's for people who you say have a website. Right. So all of them can be in, implemented into a website. Right. Cause my um, finger goes into my website too, but go ahead. Right. So like I, uh, 
pick up a book with which website. Yes, it would. Um, like I normally tell people when we sit down, when I sit down with them, you need to look at what's cost effective for you. You need to see where you are tech, technology wise. Um, a lot of people who aren't as tech savvy have been using Figaro. You know, they're computer literate, but they're not into the whole um, you coding. Know, tech lingo, coding. coding and, um, you know, getting SSL certificates. And the beauty of Figaro is this. Um, they liaise directly with you if you're looking to integrate into a site. So they have a team at first, because Figaro and First Atlantic Commerce are owned by the same company. So they they liaise directly with you if you're integrating it into your site. So they they can provide you with the SSL certificate, with the uh, gateway integration. They can help you with all of that. So you, if you're not as tech savvy, you're not quite caught up on all the lingo, um, you can take that route. Sounds good. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. So again, remember, if you have questions, type them in the chat, type them in the Q&A. In the Q&A, type them in the Q&A. It's easier for us to see the questions in the Q&A. So I see RBC worse. Oh, Jesus. Someone said they don't, don't use RBC. I use RBC, so that works for me. So if you don't use RBC, again, Tyronda pointed out several different payment process systems. So maybe sitting down with her and finding which one works best for you. So this is not saying you have to do with RBC, but I'm saying that if you were interested in working with RBC, this is an easy way to, to pay. Um, I, Tyronda said in the chat, additional tip is ensure your payment system is integrated with financial management systems. Does this work with Wix? Yes. For purposes for the grant, are you able to provide a quote for the plug and play? Kovan, would you be able to provide a quote for a plug and play or they could get a quote so they could include it in their application? I can I, I can give them it over the, over the chat. Um, it's $500 for a one-time setup fee. The reason why they're saying that is because when we are applying for these grants, whether it's Mercy mm. Corps or Act, you need to show... I, I follow. Um, so if, even if there's somewhere on a website that they could go, because even that will show like, this is the proof of how much this costs and they could include it in their files. Right. Um, what I can do, uh, if you can send a contact to me, I can email a quote to her. Okay. Okay, great. So what to do is, uh, hello at islanddreamsmanagement.com. Send me an email saying, oh, I want to, and Kovan, put your email information in the chat too, so they could email you directly. Okay. Email you directly. Okay. So put your information in the chat. Okay, great. So based on my investigation, only CIBC. So look into CIBC. Somebody was asking if it's the only bank that does it. Look into CIBC. RBC mobile credit card processing works great. So that's another thing. So if you don't have it, maybe contacting um, CIBC and seeing what they do. Um, and Kovan is going to put his information in the chat. So I'm going to get to the questions, but there are uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long. So I went to access, um, not access accelerator. So some things on access accelerator said that they need your identification. They need your business profile, which is also like a business plan. And I told you all the importance of having that branding information for your business um, plan. You need a business license for access accelerator. Um, and you need business details. When I say details, that's like, like I said, we're going to put Tyronda's link again in the chat. We told you about a website. We told you about software, but you just can't go online and look for software and say, I'm going to do it. Another thing about Access Accelerator, I want you guys to hear this clearly. If there is a Bahamian account that is doing the operations for you, they need to be at a registered licensed Bahamian account with a TIN number. Registered. So when you ask people for quotes, because a lot of you start to say, oh, Kovan, don't forget to put your, his email is right there. Kovan, you send it to just panelists, selling it to panelists and attendees. So send it again, look down at the bottom and send it to panelists and attendees because you just sent it to panelists. So this is a great point to know. If you're applying for Access Accelerator, they, it has to be a registered company with a TIN number and wire information. It has to be. So if you uh, so if you go to someone and say, oh, could I have a, a quote for social media management? Oh, I could have a quote for graphics. Ask them at the same time, are you a licensed business with a TIN number, with a business account that they can send this to. If they say no, ask them if they're affiliated with a company who is, who doesn't mind doing the processing for them. I have had to do it for other clients and 
I, or if you're on the call and you're saying, oh, Corel, I've worked with you before. I do social media or I worked with you before. I do graphics. I don't have all of that information in place. And these applications are due in two weeks. Then let's have a chat to see how we can work out so you can still provide quotes for the people. But Access Accelerator will not pay a merchant who does not have a, a, a wired information and a business account and a TIN number. Make sure they have that. So when you're going through your application, make sure that you're getting quotes from them and get quotes early. I can't even tell you, because I mean, these grants process have been going on. And as a business owner, somebody contacted me two days before. Corelle, you can send me a, a, a quote tomorrow. You can send me a quote by Sunday. You're giving me two days. Y'all know right now, tonight, you have two weeks. Sit down after this call. I hope you took pictures of the slide that Tyrande was presenting. And I hope that you booked the session with Tyrande. Cathedral, if you could put that in one more time, because you could get a detailed plan of what you're going to do, because all of that is necessary and you need to find out early if these businesses can be applied for. So another thing with Access Accelerator is you need supplier info. That's what I was talking about just now. And then you need to sign. So Mercy Corps, that's Abaco and Freeport. Tell me if you're still in the chat, Abaco and Freeport. Say Abaco and Freeport still here. If you're still in the chat from Abaco and Freeport with Mercy Corps, it is a very competitive race. There are only 40 participants who will be awarded. Only 40. There were 70 of seven of us here tonight and that doesn't even include all the people who wasn't who, who wasn't here but they're still applying there's only 40 so it's extremely competitive so when i say if you know that you need extra help with the technology to make sure that they know for real for real sign up with tyronda to do the one-on-one -on -one. there's only 40 and they're not evenly splitting it. it's not like oh 20 for abaco and 20 for freeport it's 40 total the best 40 the best 40 that comes in March 1st is the deadline. Write it down. It's March 1st. March 1st is the deadline. They only have 40. They have a judging criteria. Their judging criteria is on business, via the, the, how viable your business is. Is this business going to last? Is this business really serving clients? Do you actually have a clientele? Remember, I talked all about that in the branding slide. They also said the business need. Like, do you really need these things? Or did you hear it was given out $5,000 and you just throw some technology stuff on the paper? You came here tonight, you took pictures of the slide and you wrote, so I need Figaro, I need HoneyBook. You don't even know what HoneyBook does. Remember what Tyronda said? Make sure you know how to use the system. They are going on business need. Like, does your business really need this technology stuff that you're writing down? And then time frame of spending funds. This is nothing, something else important to note. Also, Mercy Cost will do another informational session next week, Tuesday. So also feel free to check that out. If you want to know how to go to that information session for Mercy Cost, also reach out to me. But Mercy Corps, um, and you can reply to those emails we send you about this event. May 15th, you have to be able to spend all the money by May 15th. So when I say spend all the money by May 15th, that's why I said be very diligent with the vendors you are using and decide, okay, what do I need and what can I get by May 15th? You know, can I get somebody to give me a quote for this and I get it in time for that? Because the money has to be spent by May 15th. Mercy Corps, the money goes to your personal account. You do not need to send it to a business account. They cannot pay businesses. It has to go to your personal account. So no worries about getting a business account if you're doing, if you're in Freeport or Abaco. Um, some things that people think about. So if you're thinking about online software, think about Zoom, think about MailChimp fees, think about Calendly, think about HoneyBook, think about QuickBooks, hardware, think about computer, think about digital camera, think about lighting, website elements, think about copy, someone paying someone for copy, paying someone for SEO, paying someone for photography, paying someone for video, paying someone for graphic, and paying someone for IT training. All of those things are things you need to think about when you're thinking about the grant. All right, so I'm going to answer those questions. Um, just let me know in the chat if tonight was helpful for you, if Tyrande provided some information to get your technology grant ready. March 1st and February 26th, Tyrande? February 26th is the date? Yeah. So access accelerator. So if you live in Freeport or Abaco, you are, it's up Sorry, to 10, the 28th. 28th. So the 28th is, the 28th is access accelerator. And March 1st is... Bursi Corps for free and Abaco. Some questions in the chat. I want to answer them. Can I position the brand to handle two different classes of clientele? Yes, you can cater to more than one clientele, but you have to be very definitive about the, the clientele. You have to know who I'm catering to and what services cater to them. So if you have things like a high end, like you do delivery for some of the higher end clients, and then these other clients do pick up, just make sure that you're always communicating that. Okay. All right. So the next one is, is RBC account a requirement or they have to be able to disperse the funds to your preferred bank account? RBC is a requirement as far as I know. I don't know anyone else who has a partnership with Figaro. Um, Kovan, do you know any other local banks that have a partnership with Figaro? As far as I'm aware, no, it's only us. Yes. 
So yes, Mikhail, you do need an RBC account. That's for Figaro. But there are other online, remember she talked about other online systems. She talked about Canoe. She talked about Mobile Assist. She talked about, so again, if you want to ask uh, Tyronda and sit down with her, like, okay, maybe I look into something else. Um, how do I how do I go about that or which one would be best for me? She could talk to you about all of those payment processing systems and tell you which one would be best for your company. Okay. He said, it doesn't need a website to use Figaro. Can he expand on that? I sell on Facebook marketplace now. Yeah. So you could send, I don't know if this attendee is still here, but you could send it to WhatsApp. You could send, cause it allows you to go and copy the link. Once you have like, say you, you set it up in products and then you copy the link and you could send that copy link on WhatsApp, you can send that copy link to a Facebook inbox. You can send that copy link to, you can ex extend it anywhere. Perlene, I saw the question. February 28th is the deadline for that. So yeah, that's what he means. He means you could put it in WhatsApp. You could put it on Facebook Messenger. You could put it anywhere. Just take the link. You could take the link and even connect it to your website if you had one. All right, great presentation. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, ladies. Very helpful, very informative. Thank you. This was helpful. Oh, I'm glad. Where to find information on Mercy Corp Grant? Okay, so Mercy Corp Grant, email us at hello at islanddreamsmanagement.com. There's a $50 monthly fee on plug and play cover unlimited transactions. Um, $50 nets you 142 transactions. Once you reach transaction number 143, there's an additional seven cents. Okay, there you go. You heard that, Kira? How much is Mercy Corp? Mercy is up to 5,000. So you know what they mean when they say up to. They mean that, that everybody ain't getting $5,000. I'm just telling you right now, I've been on the other end. I might as well just brief y'all right now. Up to is their way of saying you may not get $5,000. But still do your grant to add up to 5,000. If you get it, there might just be some things. You, and if you don't, there might be some things you can't get, but do it up for that. But they're giving up to $5,000 for Mercy Corps and up to $5,000 for Access Accelerator. Okay. And the amount of money to pay is. All right. Okay. Yeah. So the person who asked about Mercy Corps, email me so I could send you their flyer and the information for the informational session. Scotia Bank. I don't understand what that was saying. So thanks for the clarification about Figaro. Awesome. Any other questions that we had? I answered all the questions in the chat. Island traders can provide quotes and import any products needed to be brought in from abroad. Yes, island traders, way to go. Because if you're bringing in a digital camera, if you're bringing in a computer, like I said, Mercy Corps is May 15th. So you're going to need to have a quote from a shipping company to say that I'm going to pay for this online and I'm going to have it shipped in. And this is the shipping because you want to include the shipping cost. You want to include the, the cost for whatever you need to do to provide it from over there. Again, if you are just access accelerator, they don't take ones from like Amazon, but if you are Mercy Corps, you could buy something on Amazon. You could, cause it's all going to your personal account. So you could buy it off Amazon. You could pay the shipping company. So yes, reach out to Island Traders, Anton Books in Grand Bahama, and they could do up a quote for you for your thing. I'm thank you. You should have said that earlier. You lost some of the people already, but good. Anybody who's still on know that they could use Island Traders. So you want to visit Island Dreams Management, please. We're close to a thousand people. So please link our page. We're always trying to do free workshops like this or different times where we just want to educate small business entrepreneurs. Because as we said, we're all in this together and we want to help all of us grow. So stay glued to our page on Instagram. Like and follow us if you don't already so that you could stay glued. We also do free consultations. So if you want to have some more information about branding or marketing and including that in your grant, you need to include, maybe you heard me talk about strategy sessions today for 250 and you're like, I can't afford that right now included in your grant because you need to communicate to them that when I implement all this technology I have to position myself for the clients to know it's like Tyronda said she had ideas when she came in the strategy session but she needed to position her brand so more people knew about her name increase brand awareness and people know the products that she offered she was able to do that after working with us and so therefore putting that in your proposal as well is very good um, as you go forward and you prepare that proposal so you could sign up for a free consultation to meet with us to find out what we can provide Awesome. You welcome. We also, yes. And she also provides quotes for trainings. So thank you. So last thing, just say your takeaway, something that was good for you that you were like, or maybe you did that already and I missed it because I was giving you the recap. But thank you guys so, so much for attending. I hope that it was helpful for you. And I hope that thanks for the information. Awesome. I had one more question in the chat. 
What alternatives can be used for Amazon? I'm guessing that you're a NASA and access accelerator. So if you don't, if you can't buy something on Amazon and you're a NASA, so you can't apply for the Mercy Corps one. Okay, great. Then do what Tyronda said in terms of talking to some local um, computer companies and see what they can bring in or see what they can afford and maybe a little more pricey than Amazon would have been. But again, you just get the quotes from them and put it in there. But that's that's what you, because like she said, you're not going to get an invoice from Amazon for Access Accelerator. You're just not. But you could go to those local computer companies and do that. Corell, I need to speak to you tomorrow, please. Shine up for the free consultation. We dropped it in the chat. Um, we'll drop it one more time, or you can email it back and you could always reply to the emails that we sent from this and say, Corel, we need to chat. My phone number is 727-4916, 727-4916. Go and apply for those grants. Go and apply, get that money. <laughs> Up to $10,000. Go get that money, guys. Up to $10,000. Thank you so much for signing on. All right. Thanks again, Tyronda. Thanks again, Kovan. You guys were amazing. Bye. All right. <laughs>